Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you. You're watching another episode of Encounter. In this program, my guest is still Marc Antoine Schopp, who is here for a second recording, because in the previous one, we spoke about trust, and we also wanted to speak about uh, psychology, good positive energy, and also, most importantly, on the circle of forgiveness. So on the topics that we were not able to talk, we will address them in this second recording. So a very warm welcome to you, everyone watching from home, and a very warm welcome to you, Marc Antoine. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you, Roshan. I'm very pleased. So we'll just have a small recap of what we spoke uh, in the previous episode. You spoke about the five levels of trust, five levels. So the first three ones are the animal level, which is, uh, first one is the similarity, so people who are similar to us. Second is the alpha, which you mentioned are people who do things that others do not do. Uh, third one is the blind trust. Please feel free to correct no, me. No, no, it's um, perfect. It's perfect. The fourth one is coherence, so how we observe people, how they behave in terms of their trust in the face of life and situations that come to them. And the last one is giving all your trust in everything that you do. Exactly. And uh, what we call trust the process, probably. But I have to ask you this question. There's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path, coaching the matrix. So what I'm trying to say is everyone reacts differently to different situations in life, whether it's on a personal level or outside in society. It is very important to be able to be well prepared to walk this journey. And what I'm asking is probably because you have you have definitely done it. And uh, I have a feeling it's related to when you went through a depression and how you, you reacted to it. Share us your experience and how do you, did you prepare and help to yourself in it? Mm. So very interesting. Yes, coming back to the fifth level where we give our trust. This is what we do as a child. Of course. So we give our trust to everybody. And then by experiencing life, we see that people will take advantage, will abuse us, or things happen that are, will harm us because we are just love and suddenly we see people that are not at ease with it. So what will happen is we close ourselves, we close our heart, we close our light, and we walk, the walk, uh, we walk life like this. But if we continue to do so, we come to a certain point where we don't feel at ease no. because we cannot express who we really are. And that's maybe when a depression comes, can be a illness, can be a, 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 a rupture, or you say, a, you know, when, when a relationship breaks, yeah, can be yeah. losing your job, yeah. all those situations. Or people having burnouts, burnout, at work, a exactly. lot of stress. All yeah. those moments where there is a, too much coming or an event coming that make us change our path. We know we are not that good. When depression is, I stop to be pressured. Where does it comes the pressure from inside? Yes. So how do we open up again? How can we heal our wounds? What can be done for that? So there are many therapies. Yes. Okay. And I come back to psychology, which used to talk, talk, talk. And psychoanalysts used to know exactly what was the reason why you are so. I know okay. why I am so, but I'm still so. So that doesn't help. So there are other techniques, energy techniques, many other techniques. So what I would like to talk about is now forgiveness. The circle of forgiveness. The circle of forgiveness. Why is that? How does it help? In fact, the origin of these circles, and I should tell you two stories before that. The first one is, I am in 2000, year of freedom in the world, in uh, Robben Island in uh, South, Africa. South Africa. And I am watching a truth and reconciliation process in the prison. And there are three people on the floor. One, there are two blacks, one white. The black person in the middle says, I am a judge, and I will facilitate the process. And the process is truth. So he turns around to the black person around, close to him and says, can you tell your truth? So that person says, I am a reverend, priest, I don't have any house, church, or whatever. My job is to go on the street. I live in Soweto, and I meet 
people that are in distress. Who are the people in distress? People that are mostly taken by police and so on. So I go and meet them and discuss and try to do my job there. Four times, somebody tried to uh, kill me. OK. Um, well, I was shot four times. Then he says, the first time I said, mm -mm, it's not me. They took me for somebody else. No problem. It was a mistake. The second time, oh, oh, it's me. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence any anymore. So then comes fear, a huge amount of fear. He doesn't go out. He's married, family, children. He doesn't go out to his house. Trauma. He's traumatized. Okay, so he's afraid. They're waiting, but after a while, he has to do his job. So he goes out with a lot of fear. The third time, then comes anger. Anger against police, anger against everybody around him. Because not only is he fearful every day he goes out, but also constantly saying, why should I do that? It's not OK. Why are you doing so? A lot of anger. The first time, the fourth time, that anger goes towards God. Why are you making me leave these things? So I cannot, I, I, I just want that this, I'm off this. Okay, don't okay. have to leave this anymore. That's your story. Fine. Then he turns around to the next person, the, the white person. Tell your truth. I was a soldier. I was a sniper in the army. And I am the one who shoot people and I kill people. And I'm the one who shoot at you four times. And then he goes like this, and I says, please forgive me. And the priest look at him, and I say, said, I cannot give, forgive you. It's not me who forgives you. Ask God for that. And I ask for forgiveness. And we are all like that, and say, what is he saying about? Why is he asking for forgiveness, this guy? And then he says, I ask for forgiveness for all the bad thoughts, the anger I had or the wish that something bad happens to you guys, by doing so, I was closing my heart. And I don't want this anymore. This doesn't belong to me anymore. So that's why I ask for forgiveness, because I close my heart. Yes, there's a, what happens around me was not OK. But I decided to become angry, to become fearful, to judge you, and I don't want this anymore. And that's why I ask for forgiveness for that. All right. What a learning. OK, because that's not the forgiveness I was used to understand. The forgiveness that we normally use is, oh, you did something wrong. So you apologize. You apologize. But what is the moral you're trying to share with us here? So the question is, the moral is, if I close my heart because something happens, as you said, that hurt me, if I want to free myself from that, I need to do something. I need to have an action. Which action is it? Do I wait until the person that hurts me comes to me and say, oh, please forgive me, which will never happen? No. He probably does not even remember that exactly. this happened. So you say that you're still emotionally attached to what happened. Exactly. And sometimes it's years, decades. Even worse, it goes transgenerational. Trans OK, OK. Okay. okay. So we are stuck with something that is energetically in ourselves. Yes. And that blocks our being, our light body, our human being, our love body, who we really are to be. So we need to do something to heal. What? Forgiveness is a beautiful tool. Beautiful tool. And I will give you how it comes to circle of forgiveness. All right. If you are hurt. Is your hurt, that hurt belongs to you. Yes. What I have done to you belongs to me. Yes. But if you expect me to do something for you, you can wait long and you yes. are still hurt. Yeah. So the point is, how do I get responsibility, take over my own uh, suffering and free myself from that suffering without expecting that the others comes to me? I take my own responsibility. But how do I do so? What should I do? Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. All right, let's hold on to that thought. We'll have a look at uh, the following report on uh, the circle of forgiveness, which will give us a broader definition. And we will come back to how we work around forgiving ourselves, maybe. 
The circle of forgiveness allows you in just two to three hours to experience a beautiful ritual for the healing of your heart that is both very simple and powerful. The ritual allows your heart to heal and to get rid of the many layers of resentment, sadness, anger or hatred which have been keeping it from expressing fully all its love. Forgiveness means different things to different people. Generally, however, it involves a decision to let go of resentment and thoughts of revenge. The act that hurt or offended you might always be with you, but forgiveness can lessen its grip and help free you from the control of the person who harmed you. Forgiveness can even lead to feelings of understanding, empathy and compassion for the one who hurt you. Forgiveness does not mean forgetting or excusing the harm done to you or making up with the person who caused the harm. Forgiveness brings a kind of peace that helps you go on with life. Forgiveness allows life-affirming energy to flow freely within individuals, promoting optimal health and well-being. Resentments block the flow of energy within us, leading to distress and possible disease. Forgiveness permits a compassionate energy to flow between ourselves and others, facilitating the possibility of mutually satisfying relationships. Holding on to grudges blocks the flow of relational energy, leading to tension and a reduced capacity for meaningful connection. Forgiveness frees us to see the world with loving eyes, bringing us into a present moment that is always ripe with possibilities. Bitterness causes us to see the world with overly critical eyes, often keeping us locked in negativity and hopelessness. The healing power of forgiveness facilitates the healthy energetic flow within us, between us and around us, perpetually interrelated circles of forgiveness. Welcome back. You're still watching Encounter. Mark, uh, just before the report, we were speaking about uh, if people go through certain circumstances or events in their life where they have been hurt, they wait for the other one to come and apologize so that they can feel better. But during that break, I just realized that if you wait for someone to apologize for something they've done to you, it is only feeding your ego but it doesn't do you much because at the end of the day, you have to probably forgive yourself for what happened. I want to listen to what you have to say because it's a very new concept to me. But you're fully right. <laughs> you're fully right. So let's see. It's a bit in theory, but I think you will get into details how I can understand it better and how we peel the onion. So not coming back to that circle of forgiveness, where does it come from? So maybe you heard a guy called Don Miguel Ruiz who wrote a book about the four agreements. The Toltec four agreements. agreements. The okay. four Toltec agreements. It's well known in the world. And uh, it's a shaman or a nagyal uh, from Toltec origin. Okay. So it was translated by a French guy called Olivier Claire. Okay. Olivier wanted to meet uh, Don Miguel Ruiz and he goes to Mexico in Teotihuacan, and he is in a process with a lot of people sitting around. So the first day he's there, he's close to Don Miguel Ruiz, and Don Miguel Ruiz say, can you please knee and ask for forgiveness to that girl that is close to you? And he is there and says, maybe I did something wrong yesterday. I don't know. She must have complained. Okay, I execute, so he knees and asks for forgiveness without knowing for what, okay? Then he says, okay, now do this for the next one and do this for everybody. Ask so, for forgiveness. Yeah, he went, need and asked for forgiveness to everybody that he didn't know. But by doing so, suddenly he start to realize that the individual that is in front of him is not that person, an energy of his mother, grandmother, father, grandfather, something comes and the person that is in front of him, the energy, is another energy where he is asking for forgiveness. By doing so, there is a process where you feel your heart is melting, is opening up. Then at the end of the process, he says, okay, now say, ask for forgiveness for everybody that you use 
to say your life is miserable because of them. Okay? Yeah. Fisc, police, uh, government, boss, whoever you want, neighbor, that we use to say, oh, because of them, my life is miserable, or I have problems. So ask them for forgiveness. Good. Okay. The next one is now ask God, the one that you admire. Okay. Because you use him or her also when it's too tough to say, hey, because of you, why are you doing this to me? Mm -hmm. And you often pray and say, now you should do something for me. <laughs> okay. okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. Ask for forgiveness for that. And the last one, the most important one, the only one that counts, the only one where we can do something and influence really, who is it? Yourself? The only one is ourselves. You ask yourself for forgiveness? And that's the point. You ask yourself for forgiveness. For, you know, taking all those things that are happening around us, keeping them in our heart, blocking our heart, keeping our suffering inside us. We are the one that decide that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, things happen around us, as we just said. Give my trust. Things happen not the way I was expecting. I feel hurt. But then what? I keep it? Or do I take my power back? M my logic tells me that when you do this, it helps to open your heart chakra. Not only, yeah, heart chakra, all the chakras. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. Of okay. course, it heals the heart mostly okay. because the heart is the relationship to, to the others. So when you do this, you can feel some kind of tension leaving your body also? You'll, when we do so, I mean, look, when people out after such a circle, it's just love. I mean, people feel so at peace, so full of love, and uh, such healings. I can tell you stories. I would like to tell, share yes. a story. I, I would love to hear a story. Can we take just one minute? Yes. I just want to try those four steps with you right yeah. now. Yeah. Can, I, can, I, can we try this? Yes, I've yes. never done it before, but let's go for it. So first thing I should ask so for forgi forgiveness yeah. from you. Yeah, but the point is and then we I will ask, ask each other forgiveness. So you will start. You will look in the eyes, you know, okay. connect to who we really are. Of course, there is a process to prepare that. So once we are really connected and understand that we are in our full presence here, in eyes to eyes, okay. third eyes to third eyes, okay. then you let this ask, this request coming from inside. Okay. And when it's free, you voice it out. I ask for forgiveness. And you receive it. Yes, because it came from a very genuine place. Exactly. I could feel that. Exactly. Yes. Now you do the same to me. Okay. And when we do this in circle, you're going to do this with 10, 20, 30 people. So you'll see that something happens. It's another level. Just this process is already beautiful. Does it lead to the release of a lot of pent up emotions that have been building so many years? People cry in those circles and they let go, but they feel so good after it. Of course, of course. Wow, that's stunning. Because you realize at the end of the day, the person in front of you is more than a person. There's so much more to it that we are just limited to what we think and how we think. Okay. I should definitely attend one of your workshops. And when you do so with, you know, different communities, different professions, it's beautiful. Would you advise everyone to at least once experience the Circle of Forgiveness workshop? Of course. I mean, you know, we said how to heal your heart, how to heal that part that is so sensitive. Mm -hmm. Yes. There are several ways. One of them is the forgiveness is very powerful. So, yes, I can only recommend. It's very easy to do. What happens when you practice the Circle of Forgiveness? from your experience and from your stories? We're talking about energy, okay? We are an energy. Okay. So that energy field, mm -hmm. once you goes like that, we were talking about charisma. Okay, yes, we, we were. were. talking about, you know, self-alignment. All this happens. It's just what happens. You open your heart. You are much more conscious of who we are. Mm -hmm. You stop judging people, because when you see them in their beauty, in their light, and you see so many people different, 
I mean, how often do you look at somebody in the eyes really without judging him? And then you go to that person and you say, please, you don't have to say please, just forgive me. You see, in your eyes now you already have lights. Yes, were, I can see yours also. Okay? Yes. So, tears, those tears. Those tears are, en français, boom. They are a cream to okay. heal our heart. Okay. Okay. My mission in life, why am I here, that's why I understood, is to recognize those tears in the eyes of every being I meet. The tears? Those tears that you have now in your eyes that okay. I have now in my eyes. But when, when you say tears, it doesn't have to sound very positive. <laughs> because, because we judge tears, but those tears, those, uh, they are not positive or negative. This is when we connect with something that is much bigger. Sure. We can look, it has to do with our vagus nerve. Okay. But that's when we are opening up and touching something that is real, that we all know since always, and that we, we are in the truth. We were talking about being trust and in the truth, that's where we are now. Because when people have nothing to hide, they will lock eye contact with you. I just realized something. Whenever you have to, let's say, you have to clean a place, you have to sweep a place, you have to make sure that the broom that you will use to sweep is clean. So that, because if it's not clean and you, wipe every, you, you sweep everywhere, it will be dirty. What I've just realized is whenever you want to start with uh, the trust process, it's a good way to start with the circle of forgiveness because then you, you align yourself properly, you clean yourself well so that it helps you move forward. Is that too much thinking or does that no, make no, sense? It's, it's fully right. I mean, we don't do a circle like this and let's go and get, drink a beer. It's nothing to do. No. It's a sacred process. Oh. So we create, we find a space which is proper, we clean the space, we also prepared everybody to join, we call the direction. So there is a lot of rituals yes. to, to make it sacred and respectful. Okay. Yes, of course. Wow, fantastic. Oh, oh yes, and uh, you mentioned what happens after? And the moment you are, you know, come out and you are open and full love, the next person you're going to meet, what will happen with that person? You will give your trust. Not only trust, you radiate love. So you, you, you come and share love. So when you go home and sit, meet your family, no tension, right? No, no. It doesn't care. You are in another level where you just spread love around everywhere. And that's what we need. Uh, when you're very positive, you've, you have self-confidence, and uh, you radiate love, people respond to this. For those who, exactly, we are in that process, on that path. But it can also disturb others. You know, they are so hurt. Then when you see light, it's... It shines so strongly that it hurts. Okay. So those might react badly because also it challenges completely their ego and their, their world. So we need to learn that, how to continue to be, the word is compassionate, even with those who will react differently. It's easy for those who are on the path. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. It's beautiful. And it, it serves all those people that are here, like you are doing trying to bring some more light, some more happiness, some more love in our world. And we need that, really. But of course, others will react. So when they react, we don't judge. We continue to love. But that's also very, I mean, a path. Okay. Compassion, compassionate is, is another topic. <laughs> that's another Much deeper topic. One. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, what we can do is uh, maybe in a couple of months we can invite you again and we can speak on another topic. And I'm, I have a feeling this will happen. Um, this episode also just flew by. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. And uh, for sharing uh, your wisdom. Keep shining. Keep on doing the great work. And uh, we will meet again. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this episode of Encounter. I hope you have enjoyed it as much as I have. If you have any questions or queries on the guests or on the topic that was discussed, please drop me an email. It's encounter at mbc.itnet.mu. Until the very next program, goodbye.